People who commit graffiti often share two things in common, anonymity and a lack of talent. I think there's a lot of people that are, that are, that are neglected in, in, in art. I don't know if, because if, it's, if it's who made the paintings or what, but um... 25歳のキースヘイリングさん Tell us where this painting is going. It was made um, for a wall at Children's Hospital. Warhol realized that Basquiat was a wild child in an expensive suit. Art for the people. Just um, for a change, you know. What is street art? Not to be confused with graffiti, street art has carved out its own definition within recent decades. What was once illegal and seen as vandalism now covers entire cities and has spawned its own movement in the art community. As the predecessor to modern street art, graffiti can almost be thought of as typography, or a style of writing mixed with art that started to come about in the 60s and 70s, most likely originating in Harlem, New York. Derived from the Greek word graphene, which literally means to write, it is categorized by its often colorful and elaborate tagging. This style of art quickly became popular and spread across New York with early names Basquiat and Keith Haring leading the scene. It wasn't long before people started to realize the potential graffiti had either. It quickly became a way for speaking out against society or ensuring their voices were heard and often coincided with pushes for social change. This wasn't anything new though. Believe it or not, graffiti has always been a way for press voices and disenfranchised groups to show their protests advocate for local causes, or even as a social media style of communication. Funny enough, there are thousands of samples from ancient Rome that paint an eerily similar picture to modern day Twitter, with messages ranging anywhere from promoting a political candidate to declaring superior sexual prowess. Like for the Romans, modern American graffiti quickly spread throughout the 60s and 70s as a form of communication, and soon after we would see it be used as protest. Like with the art along the Berlin Wall, or pieces surrounding the civil rights movement in America, graffiti began to evolve into a more visual and symbolic style of art. The art form was bursting with potential and inspired artists everywhere who were desperate to be heard. Jean-Michel Basquiat's painting Defacement sheds light on police brutality, made after another artist in front of his, Michael Stewart, was beaten to death at the hands of the NYPD in September 1983. Keith Haring was another artist turned activist with his pieces focusing on nuclear disarmament or the HIV AIDS epidemic. Fast forward to today, we have those who have received incredible recognition for their activist artwork. Like the UK artist Banksy, who recently sold his piece Game Changer for $23 million. In Paris, there was Blake Lerat who pioneered the iconic stencil style that found Banksy's recognition. A common theme with all of them is that their art is practically synonymous with activism and peaceful protest. Even this year, we've seen some amazing examples of how effective it can be when used to send a message. Recognize this man? George Floyd's face is known worldwide and the street art surrounding the Black Lives Matter movement has been an incredibly effective vehicle for social change and peaceful protest. So the question is, when does graffiti and vandalism become art? Do we judge it by its legality or whether or not it was commissioned? If graffiti is text-based and street art is image-based, is that the only distinction we should make? Personally, I don't believe it's necessary for art to mean something, and likewise not all street art is symbolic or comes with a message. As it has gained popularity and become more accepted medium over the years, we definitely see it pop up as decoration or expressed without any ties to suppress sentiments in society. That being said, however, I do believe that advocacy has played a huge part in the creation of contemporary street art, and this ability it holds to give voices to the disenfranchised within society is part of what defines it today.